we pause God once again to allow the word to speak into our hearts that we will receive the good news of your coming among us hopefully the same way that the shepherds did and that just like them that we will be surprised surprised by Christmas so that it will change not just the way we celebrate this year, but hopefully the way we live. In Christ's name we all pray. Amen. Well, I want to begin this morning by showing you a really quick video uh, just to get you the Christmas spirits. So let's watch it. Wow! What's this? This is North Pole. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Where's the snow? <laughs> Why are you smiling? I just like to smile. Smiling's my favorite. Make work your favorite. That's your favorite. Okay? okay. Work is your new favorite. Fine. Time for the next. Okay, people, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., Santa's coming to Santa! Oh, my God! Santa here? I know him. I know him. He'll be here to take pictures with all the children. <coughs> Just keep your receipts. 10 a.m. tomorrow. 10 a.m. tomorrow. Yeah, let's come into town. Yes. Hi. Santa's coming. Well, well, apparently uh, Buddy the Elf is very excited because Santa is coming. I mean, let me rephrase that. He's not just excited. He is overwhelmingly excited. And um, I would recommend you watch that movie. It's one of my favorite movies. But um, he, uh, in his excitement, he, he wants everyone to know that... Santa is coming. Because, as he said in the video, he met Santa at some point and he knows that if you know Santa, your life will change. Now, the Bible talks a lot about encounters throughout the entire Bible that changed everything. People who had this experience of meeting God and their lives were never the same. They, they, they just completely changed the way they live, they changed the direction of their lives. There was such a profound change that not only their lives changed, but that encounter was so exciting and so positive and so, so good to them that the least that they were able to do was to tell other people about that change and uh, the new life and the new faith and the new way that they have found. They couldn't stay silent. And I guess a little bit of, of purpose of showing you this video is because as we are in the midst of this uh, Christmas season, uh, there is this hymn that we like to sing during, during Christmas uh, that reflects, I guess, this truth clear, very clearly. We just sing it over and over again and sometimes I don't know if we just like the melody or we really pause to reflect on what he's say, saying about us. Go tell it on the mountain, right? Over the hills. And everywhere, go. I'm not gonna sing it, so don't. <laughs> that Jesus Christ is born. So we 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 have this exciting exciting news that Christ has been born born among us. People need to know, and I guess it comes. The question that I ponder about myself is: besides Sunday morning. Am I taking the time to tell people that Jesus Christ is born among us? You know, looking at the history uh, of, of what happened during the birth of Jesus, if you look at other cultures, uh, at the special birth of other cultures, the, you know, other cultures, you will realize that when a king was born, uh, you will find this uh, literature that will tell you that uh, poets and artists uh, will write special songs and poems about the birth of the king. 
it was such a historic and important moment that the best way to celebrate was by again uh, memorializing that moment with a song that the people would learn, the people of the country or the nation would memorize, and they would sing it to the king. Then you will have this procession of very important people. You will have the dignitaries, um, the important people, the artists uh, that will come into the palace or whatever this baby was to pay their respects and they will bring gifts. And all over the lands they will proclaim that there is a newborn king and certainly it will be a time to have a party because the birth of a new king in theory symbolized the, the, a good good tidings, an opportunity for light, for, for a good life, for a better life. And so indeed there will be a party all over the place. And then we look at the birth of Jesus and, he, and the story of the birth of Jesus sounds very similar to what I'm telling you. The angels then are the ones coming from heaven proclaiming that there is a new baby. There's a chorus of shepherds that, and a chorus of angels that appear to the shepherds that Jesus, the Son of God, um, is born. But here is where the twist of the story uh, makes a very dramatic change. The lowly shepherds, the outcasts, the, the religiously unclean because they are touching animals all day long, the distrusted by many uh, for being lazy, lazy and useless, the shepherds, the people who are shepherds, because that's the only thing that they, they, they can do. And basically, if you wanted to be a shepherd, all you need to do was to breathe. There was no preparation, there was no training, there was no special uh, skills that you needed to have. If you were willing to touch the sheep, sleep with the sheep, uh, do all, you know, just spend the nights outside and stink all day long because if you have a near sheep, you know that they have a particular smell. <laughs> then you could be a shepherd. And it is to this unorthodox group of men that the birth of the king of the world, the king of kings, is announced. And not only that, but they were the ones in charge of going and telling other people of the good news. It wasn't, it wasn't the poets, it wasn't the artists with amazing and beautiful pictures and murals. It was the shepherds. It was the shepherds. Now let's, let's pause for a moment, because I think it's important for us to take a second and really think about what this means. The best news that you, you could ever receive. The best news that will change the world. The news that will really bring hope and light in the midst of darkness. The announcement of the birth, the prophecy that was being fulfilled was not announced to the religious people, was not announced to the rich people, was not announced to the intellectuals. It was announced to the people that represent completely the opposite. With all the power that God may that God has, with all the power, you know, all the power concentrated in Jerusalem, why did God choose the countryside outside of the big cities, the city of well, the village of Bethlehem? Why did God choose the smallest of all? And if you allow me, maybe I have a theory about it. Maybe I have two theories, but one is, maybe, maybe God chose the shepherds because as we look at the history of Abraham and Moses and David, we will remember that all of them at some point were shepherds. And all of them at some point in their lives just had normal lives and then they received this amazing visit from God to that made amazing promises to them and throughout their lives, even though they were shepherds, even though they didn't have all, well, some of them did, but not all of them, had all this amazing power, they were able to witness to the world that God indeed had a better plan for their lives. Maybe God was trying to tell us once again that, you know, 
It's okay to be a shepherd when you have important news to tell. Maybe, maybe it might be actually be better that you're a shepherd because when the sheep gets lost, the shepherd will go look for you. The shepherd will leave the 99 to go and find the one that is lost. And maybe that's the way God was telling the world, this is the way I'm going to care for you. But I also have another theory that maybe we can connect to my first theory. This is a little bit of a crazier theory that I have this morning. Maybe God chose the shepherds to remind us that even when they were despised and unwanted, even when they lived far away from the busy lives of most people of their day, even when they were not important financially, politically, or even socially, God chose to reveal God's glory first to them because God was making a statement. Actually, more than a statement, a personal statement to all of us. That Jesus indeed came for all of us. That we are never too low, too insignificant, too unimportant, too powerless, too unwanted, too, too forgotten, or too anything. For God to love us, for God to search for us, for God to find us, and for God to surprise us. So, so when then we begin to see those Christmas pictures and we begin to sing those Christmas songs, and we read the stories, the story of Jesus once again, and we hear the shepherds being mentioned, maybe what God wanted to tell us was to remind us that God indeed is crazy. Yes, you heard me right. God is crazy about us. God is crazy for you. God longs to be with us. God longs to offer the tender, tender care that so many times we have refused. That God would not leave us and forsake us. God will not let us wander off. And that God, in the end, lay down his son in order that we will come back to God's family forever. And again, let me just emphasize one thing. Here is the authority of, of it all. God invited the uninvitable to the birth. God invited the undesirable shepherds to the most important birthday of the entire universe and the cosmos. God included, let me repeat this to you, the stinky, uneducated, lowly shepherds. Now, think with me for a moment, the most important event in your life. We already asked this question to the kids. Think about the most important event in your life. And you're going out to celebrate your accomplishments. Now look around the table and see the people who are there. See in your heads who's going to be there. Your best friends. Maybe your family. <laughs> look around the table. All of your favorite people are there, right? All of your favorite people are there. Okay, now think with me. Who are the people that you don't want them to be there? Think, think about it for a moment. I'm sure you have a list of people. Maybe it's a co-worker, your crazy uncle, your schoolmate that can't stop talking. Fill in the blank. Well, that is exactly the people who God included in the birth of Jesus. And that is why God is choosing the shepherds. To remind us that at some point, even the outsiders, even those that we don't want to put down, are people of value. Even the people that we avoid, even the people that we don't care about, 
God includes them in the most important moment besides the resurrection. He includes them in that moment to be part of it. You know, I think that when you came into church this morning, you received the bulletin in your hands, didn't you? If not, I need to talk to the ushers. <laughs> you got a bulletin in your hands, and if you look at, your, at, the, at the cover of your bulletin, you will find that St. Matthew says that we are an inclusive community. <coughs> and I know that we can struggle and fight over what it means to be inclusive, but if we just go by the basic, basic, basic understanding of inclusivity, it means that all people are welcome in our church. I wonder, I wonder with you if we are truly that inclusive. I wonder, not because we are not, but because we are probably not that, at times, we are not aware, we are not including as part of our church. I wonder if, I wonder if the stinky shepherds of our time will be welcome in our church. I wonder if we would sit next to them or if we just make some space between us and them. I wonder if they would receive a bulletin. I wonder if we would tell them, you know, I don't know if what you're wearing is the right thing for church. The story of the shepherds is the story of a God that reminds us that we can all be part of God's family. The story of the shepherds is the story that even you and I can be part of God's family, which again is totally crazy. <coughs> and here is just like I've been saying, the, the icing on the cake. The story tells us that as soon as they saw the baby Jesus, as soon as they found Mary and Joseph, they were crazy. Remember that I told you that God was crazy for us? Remember how I told you that once you have this encounter with God, you change, and maybe people will think you're crazy? Well, that is exactly what happened to the shepherds. Because somehow the story says that the shepherds, those that don't have any voice, became very loud. So loud that they went into the town and not caring what they were wearing, or anything about it, and they went into the towns to tell the people that Jesus was born. They were so impacted by that moment, by that encounter, that they went and they <coughs> tell it to everybody. Literally over the hills and everywhere. That Jesus Christ is born. Because this is what more reality allows the world that we live in. You know, there are many people, if you haven't noticed, who haven't heard good news lately. There are a lot of people, if you haven't noticed, that though they might have done many hurtful and horrible things, God still loved them. They need to know that. Some haven't heard that despite their stubbornness and their attraction, their attraction to things that are bad for them, they don't have to be defined by that. And that there is hope for them. But we need to go and tell them that. Some haven't heard that the last shall be first. 
and that the greatest among you is the one who decides to serve all the people. They haven't heard that. This morning, if you look at that picture, you can see that the shepherds were pretty surprised. Maybe you're surprised this morning. But maybe, once again, <coughs> you may need to go and surprise somebody before Christmas. Not just because you're going to give them what they want for Christmas, but because you're going to show how crazy you are. <coughs> how crazy about the love of Jesus in your life can help you to overcome the hurt and pain between you and them. And to remind them once again that no matter where they are, what they have done, what they have heard, they can be part of God's life. Go up the mountain, over the hills, and everywhere, go. Go tell it on the mountains that Jesus Christ is born.